the effort to improve in your maths. So what I want to do now is I want everyone's attention to go to this warm up question. And so the main focus of today's lesson is really just going to be the basics or the, the mechanics of algebra, the, the core skills that we need to work with variables. And so this first question, the key word is going to be to simplify. So I want you to simplify what we call this algebraic expression. Now, in simplifying, you have to do a whole bunch of things like distribute brackets, collect like terms. These are all things that I'm sure that you've been talking about. But for the moment, I just want to give you a chance to um, do that. And then once you've got your final answer, I'd love you to put it in the chat. Okay, so it's now, I'll give you three minutes for that. How's that? Oh, so we'll, at 17.06, I will give you the correct answer, but I would like everyone to see how you can do with that. And yeah, I think that's it. If you're very, very stuck, then you can raise your hand or pop a message in the chat. But for now, I think we should just go straight into trying to do this question. Okay, X to the four. I don't agree for Rosa at this stage. Can I suggest you start? So for those who are feeling a bit uncertain, why don't you start by distributing those two brackets? And then also what I think may be a good idea is to write this out the long way. So that's my tip, but I don't want to steal your thunder. If you write that out the long way, you should be able to see kind of where we're going with that. So X plus two. So all I've actually done, I've rewritten the question, but I've written it in a way that it's, it's written out in its full form. Yeah. So I guess we could even call this step one. And I think, Mr. Lucky, I think that I would call it the translation stage almost, you know, no, you no, we like, get it in easy format. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can, we can just say the translation stage, yeah. Or the expansion stage, we expanding X minus two in bracket squared. Yeah. yeah. But now what is step two gonna be? Let's see. Distribution. Yeah, that is the key. So let me use a different color. So I'm sure Ms. Jen has spoken to you about this idea. I feel like I'm possibly chosen a bit of a bright color. But <laughs> so that's the process I want to see. Okay, our first answers have come in. We're not sure if they're correct yet, but let's see what variety we have. So thank you, Kele. Thank you, Ahik, Ali. So guys, one of the most interesting things I've read in research papers is just the act of committing to an answer, even if it's wrong, helps you remember the correct answer when you see it more. So don't be one of those people who sit back and go, ah, oh, I'll just watch what the teacher does. Make sure you commit to putting your answer in the chat. Okay, because even if it's, it's a wrong answer, when you see the right answer, it'll help you stick, it'll help it stick more in your brain. Who else has an answer for us? I agree. Yeah. I want to see some more answers coming in before we, I, I give away any more of the good stuff. So, I'm going to call that stage translate because I've taken something which looks a bit weird and I've translated it into something that I understand a bit easier. Now, I think I would call the second step expansion or we could call it distribution would be another way of essentially the same thing. And I want to see what you guys have got. Okay, Banele, who else? Still got another minute, so then I want to, okay. All sorts of answers, let's keep them coming. So Piwa has got an answer. Mm. 
Okay, so I'm gonna give you the answer now. Please keep those answers coming in. There's a bit of a lag, but really step two is expanding this bracket. And when we multiply two um, binomials, essentially when we have you know, each of these, there's two terms in each bracket, you need to multiply each one by each other one. So X times X is my first. And I'm gonna get X squared. Then I'm gonna get minus X. Then I'm gonna get plus two X. And then I'm gonna get minus two. Now, if you got that part right, give me a thumbs up in the chat. If you got that part wrong, give me a thumbs down in the chat. I want to feel, because this question is made up of parts, and I need to see where I'm losing you. So thumbs up if you got the red part correct. Thumbs down if you got the red part wrong. It also helps me with speed. Okay. Okay, so it's about even so far. Keep those votes coming. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that first part over here. I'm actually going to leave it in one big bracket, like it's one thing. And then I'm going to move to the second bracket. I'm going to move this out the way. And I want to see, I want you to just work out what this bracket should be. Leave the minus in front and see if you can get... I'll give you 30 seconds or so just to see, can you multiply out X minus two times X minus two correctly? Because this is really repeating the first part that some of you got wrong. And so I want to give you a chance to catch that up. Okay, Anon, you, things are looking, looking good, I think. Let's check. So it's x times x is x squared minus 2x. Oh, be careful here. Maybe I should even make a bit more of a song and dance about this. So x times minus 2 is minus 2x, guys. And minus 2 times x is also minus 2x. And then the last one that catches lots of us, minus 2 times minus 2 is, in fact, plus 4. Okay, now the question is not done. I've simply finished step two, which was the expanding step. The other thing I want to point out that not everyone will necessarily understand is look, I call these my insurance brackets. Notice how I've got brackets around the one part and brackets around the other that relate to the beginning. Uh, let's see if we can get rid of these. Now, the reason I do that is I want to make sure that I don't make silly mistakes when I subtract these things at the end. Okay, so the next step I'm gonna say is gonna be a simplifier. Uh, so step three, or collect like terms. Maybe I should say collect like terms. Like terms. So in this bracket, there are like terms the only two like terms I see are minus x and 2x. So I get left with x squared. Now, what is minus 1x plus 2x? It's just good old x. And then the minus 2 stays where it is. And then here, I get x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now I've collected my like terms. Now, the last step is to deal with the subtraction. I would love somebody to come on the line now and explain how I deal with this negative, because this is really the crux of it. How, how I got this big thing in a bracket minus something else in a bracket. What is the correct way to deal with that? And I would love, I see your hand is up. Are you volunteering? Kogo Moto? Is that a question or are you volunteering? Komoto? Komoto? <laughs> Okay, okay. Who would like to tell me, I'd love to know, because really this, this negative... Who, Tando. Tando, you want to come online? Give us a... What do you think I do? 
Please come over here. Yeah. Um, the neg we say negative times the positive x squared, and then we get negative x squared, and then we also multiply the negative four x with the negative besides us outside the brackets, and negative Perfect. minus negative times negative is positive, so we have positive x. Okay, Tando, you I want to pick up on something you said. You applied the negative not just to the x squared, you applied it to all the terms in the brackets. So this is the thing that's most common. Some students will only apply the negative to the first part. You applied it to all of them, which was the main idea I wanted to show everyone. Now, sometimes what I, what I like to say to students is there's actually a phantom one sitting in front of the brackets here, in front of both of them. Because if you multiply anything by one, it doesn't change the value. And so when I'm finishing this off, if I imagine a one in front of the first bracket, I just write x squared plus x minus two, not very exciting. But the second bracket, I have to apply the minus one to the x squared, which gives me minus x squared. Then minus one to the minus four x, like Tando was saying. So that's plus four x. And then minus one applied to the four is minus four. And so now I'm gonna look for, again, like terms. Tando, is your hand up again? You wanted to make another comment? Okay. So x squared minus x squared is nothing. And then I've got to collect. What's an x plus 4x is 5x. And then I've got minus 2 minus 4, which is minus 6. So you get 5x minus 6. Okay. How are you guys feeling about that? So thumbs up if you're feeling okay, thumbs down if you're feeling like, whoa, 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 last lesson was a long time ago. I wanna see how the group is feeling. Okay, so some people are feeling good, some people are feeling lost. Okay. So what I wanna emphasize with this first question was how I went through a very deliberate set of steps. And the first one was to make it look as simple as possible. The second one was to expand. Then the third one was to collect like terms. And then the last one was kind of a multiplying out. So I think we need to slow down a little bit first. I think that first one was a bit tough. And so we'll slow it down a notch just to get everybody. Okay, this question over here is practicing the skill of collecting like terms. So if I look at this expression, this is nowhere near as complicated as the first one. And so all I want you to do is simplify it and write me the equivalent simpler expression and then put it in the chat. Let's see if this makes us a bit happier. So I want you to think that the key word I'll give you is like terms. Lucky, have you guys been using that word like terms or what, what have you been using um, yes, definitely. We've been using like terms. Okay. So I want you to focus on that. And then I want to see what is the equivalent expression um, for this, but simplified using like terms. So I think, yeah, that first one was a bit of a toughie to start with. It was like the level four type of a question for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Complex procedures and <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Okay, I see some answers coming in. So when I say like terms, in case maybe this is your first lesson today, like terms mean the same variable and the same power. So these two would be like terms and these two would be like terms. And so the question is, how do you combine them and what do you get? From what I'm seeing in the answers, we're mostly there. Uh, two of something take away five of something is minus three of that something and then three y plus y is going to be four y so it's minus three x plus four y and so this is the like term skill i think you know we're pretty good now this next question is adding like terms but there's also the problem of these two terms and I don't want to say, I want to say, I want you to simplify this whole expression, but I want you to use not only like terms, but you use the distributive principle to help you. 
And again, I'm going to give you some time to try and get the answer and then put it in the chat. So we can't add, we can't add these two together at the moment. But there aren't like terms around really to be added. So what can you do to get there? Hey, Peter, can I jump in? Please do, Lucky. Please do. So, great nines. Another thing that can help you is that when you're given an expression like this, you identify your terms. So when I look at this, we have three terms. That's the x, the 2y multiplied by the 3 minus 1, and the 3 multiplied by the x plus 2. So when you've identified your terms, you check which term needs to be simplified further. So the second term there, you can distribute the 2y. The third term, you can distribute the 3. Then from there, you'll be having a simple linear expression where you can identify your like terms. Yeah, I really like that. So, so identifying the terms first, and that requires us to go, you know, find out where they are, and then look which are the terms that can be simplified. I think that's a really nice way of, of putting it. So the X can stay as it is, but the 2Y gets multiplied by the 3. And that's minus 2Y for that. And then 3 times X is 3X. Okay. So now we have a whole bunch more terms, but at least we can find our um, like terms. So X, how many X's? There's 2 there's the x's, and then we have the y's, and then we have just one constant term at the end. So I'm going to go in alphabetical order. So I'm going to collect my x's. 1x plus 3x is 4x. 6y minus 2y is 4y plus 6. So 4x plus 4y plus 6. Okay. So watch out for, yeah, let's just keep going through those steps. But again, figuring out which terms uh, need to be simplified is an important step. Okay. Oh, what's going on here? Okay. This is a slightly different type of question. I want to see how many of you can get the answer straight away. Uh, all I'll say to you is x squared is the same as x times x. That's my hint to you. But I want you to tell me what the final answer is in the chat. Mm -hmm. So this expression is different because the powers are involved. If we look at the previous question, we didn't really have as many powers involved. Oh, look. Yeah. And so the rules for dealing with powers are a bit different. If we know that the bases are the same, but the, you know, essentially this thing, if they're the same and you're multiplying, you can just add the powers until you get X to the seven. Yeah. Okay. You seem to have mastered that. So no use worrying too much about that. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I have a question, but it's about the previous sum, B. About B? Yes. So, yeah. The final answer, I got it right, but then I just have a query. When we add, when we're adding variables that are the same, aren't they supposed to be the variable and then to the exponent two? Okay, so when you said that when they're the same, could you clarify a little bit? So when what do you mean by... Like when we're adding or subtracting numbers that have the same variable, variable, isn't it supposed to be the number, then the variable, then the exponent two as the answer? It is, but if there's a one there, we don't write it. So the one is there, but because one is, it's like there's always a one in front of a variable as well. I call it like the phantom one. We don't write it. We only really explicitly write it when there's a two or a three or something like that. Oh, you know what I think um, Lenovo was mentioning? I think yes. he was saying, must not the answer be 4x squared instead yes. of just 4x? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So when we add or subtract terms, 
we do not touch the exponent. It's like saying one apple plus three apples, it will be four apples. It won't be four apples squared. So when we add or subtract, we do not touch the exponents. Yeah. So uh, thanks for that. Um, so there's different ways of, if you're adding or subtracting the um, terms, the way we deal with them is quite different to how we're multiplying and dividing. And so that's actually what we're doing now. Like in this question, you just did a multiplying of two terms. Yes. Now, now you have to divide two terms, which is a slightly different, there's a different set of procedures or methods we use. Okay, so let's get D. Let's just see if everybody gets D first. Okay. What I like to do for students is sometimes I write the question out in full for them because then they don't lose track of what, is, what this is what this is saying. Okay. So, the final answer is x to the power of 2, and the shortcut way of doing it is saying, if the variables are the same, we just subtract the powers, so 5 minus 3, which is x to the 2. But I quite like students to think about this big set of writing here, because this is equivalent to this one, and it shows you why if you cancel out an x and an x, these are all worth one. How many do I have left? I've just got x times x or x squared. That's why the answer is x squared. Okay. Um, so let me, there didn't seem to be too many problems on that one. So let's take it up a notch, guys. And I want you now to use the whatever things you've seen in today's lesson. Can you give me, can you, if you've got x to the 3 divided by x to the 4 times y, I want you to think about what would be a simple way of visualizing this. And then I'll wait for the answer to come through. Oh, it's zoomed in. So whenever I see powers, I just go and write it like it used to be, you know, the full old school way. Okay, so what are the answers coming in so far? All I've done is write it out that way. Um, X to the power minus one Y, X, Y, let's have a look. Okay, well, X cubed is just X times X times X. X to the four is X times X times X times X times Y. I think anything over itself is one. So X of X is one. That's going to be one. That's going to be one. And so the important bit is that the x, y is not in the numerator, it's in the denominator. And so my final answer is going to be 1 over x, y, or I saw some of you saying x, y in brackets to the power of minus 1. Mm -hmm. And so that is a, you know, again, I, I really advise you that if you're confused by powers, just go back to writing it out in full until you feel confident again. Uh, there's no harm in doing that. In fact, I think it helps a lot of students to do that. Guys, can you just give me a, a thumbs up if you're feeling okay or thumbs down if you're feeling lost? I just want another check on how the class is doing. Uh, we're going to have a break in a minute or two. Before we do, I want to just check in. Okay. Then try using everything you've learned in this lesson so far, what is minus 2x in brackets squared going to equal? So coming back to that question that was asked earlier, it's like, 
Am I, am I adding? Am I multiplying? What's happening? That's an important thing to think about. Okay, I'm looking at all these names. Oh, there's lots of so I think if I translated this, that might be helpful. Because doesn't it just squared mean repeat whatever's below? Ah. Hmm. Yeah, see, everyone's on the right track. The main thing I want to clarify is what does this mean if we have a power of two outside? So whatever is inside the bracket must be repeated twice. That's what it means to have minus two X in brackets squared. That's why when I wrote over here, you'll see minus two X, then you'll see it again. Now this is a multiplication. And so when we multiply minus two times minus two, we get positive four. And x times x gives us x squared. So let's just see how two people ended up with negative four x squared. And the reason you did is you only applied this to that and to that. You forgot about, you left out the, the minus. Whereas if you write it out in full, you can see that there's two negatives. Come on. That's a really important, I'm gonna give you another one like this. I'm gonna make one up for you on the spot. I'm gonna be sneaky. I want you guys to work out what is the answer to Mr. S's made up question. Bonus round, bonus round. At the darn draw. <laughs> and then I think it's time for a bit of a brain break. Songe, I see your answer. I think you're onto something there. I thought maybe I'd catch some of you with this one, but we'll see. <laughs> Have I caught anyone? I haven't caught anyone yet. Okay, so the important thing to realize is to the power of three just means repeat this three times. And so what do you get if you multiply a minus three by minus three by minus three? You don't get positive, you get a negative. What do you get when you go X times X times X? You get X cubed. Guys, Okay, so I caught some of you, I can see some, some positive 27s. So this is really, really important. When you have a power, when the powers are involved, if it's a, an odd number and there's a negative involved, it's gonna end up being negative. Whereas if it was even, in fact, I can't help myself guys, you must do one more just to show you this, this idea. What is the um, answer gonna be for minus three X to the power of four? So last one, and then I promise we'll have a break. What is minus three X to the power of four equal to? Because there's an important idea hiding in here. Uh, I would say, why not write it out in full to really get a sense of what this is saying? Because the goal of today is to get comfortable with this language of algebra. And a lot of times students don't take the time to almost understand like the phonetics. I mean, I'm using an analogy from reading, but you know, you have to learn the sounds that make up a word before you can just do the word. So I think for a lot of students, it would make sense to go minus three X is the thing in the bracket. How many times does it repeat? It repeats not three times, it repeats four times. Now, when you have an even power, 
Whenever there's an even power, you're always going to end up with a positive. And in this case, it's going to be uh, three times three is nine. So you're going to end up with 81. And it's positive 81. And then the power, let's have a look at the answers. I see here, yeah, x to the power of four. Okay. So the moral of the story is when we deal with powers, we need to be careful that we really understand what the number out here is actually doing. And all it's doing is it's saying repeat whatever's below, but repeat it as a multiplication. So that's why when we do this part, we're multiplying. And so we're not using like terms here. What we're doing is we're literally just saying uh, the, the coefficient, uh, where is my... The coefficient, the minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three, and then x, x, x. Okay, guys, what I want you to do is I want you to stand up. I don't know if you normally do this, but I want you to stand up and I want you to just stretch because you've been using your brain hard and I think you deserve a break. And so I'm also going to stand up. So I'm going to stand up. And yeah, I definitely need to stand up. <sighs> Does that feel good? <laughs> um, uh, and then once you've had a little stand and stretch, I'm going to set you a little puzzle, but that puzzle is not going to be what you normally do. We are going to play my favorite game here. Well, not favorite, but... So I don't know if you've played this before. It's called Maths 24. And what you have to do is you have to try and take these four numbers and make 24. You can only use each number once, and you only get to use plus, minus, times, and divide. And so I want to see who can, who can um, get 24. Like, an example would be like 1 plus 6 plus six plus two. Now that gets me to 15. So, so far 15 is the closest anyone has got. The goal is to get to 24. And so I want to see the chat, who can get 24 from this card. Who's played this game before? G give us a thumbs up if you've played this game before. It's like a, it's a classic. Ah, okay. So six plus six times. Okay. I think the answer has fallen to, so six, uh, six plus six is 12. And 12 times 2 times 1 is 24. So well done. I think the first person was Ahik Ali. But it's time for the level 2 card. Who can get to 24 with that one? A little bit, little bit harder. And I haven't done these, so I don't know what the answer is. So... So, Ottilia, you have to use all four numbers. So, four times three times two does give you 24, but you haven't used all four numbers. So, you have to, um, you have to use all four. Or who can at least get close? Let's see who can get close to 24. Let's have a look. Four times four is 16. Times three is 48. And 48 divided by two is 24. So the glory goes to... Uh, who is it? Yes, Simpiwe. Simpiwe. That's yes. it. Simpiwe, well done. Shout out to you, man. You're a mass 24 natural. It's time to send you to the Olympics. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. That was that was great. You you're you're pretty good at that. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. So let us then we we're only going to go for about another thirteen or fourteen minutes, and then we're going to send you off tonight. Oh, Simpiwe is a she. Simpiwe, you you are winning at life. Shout out to you. Hold on, get a go. Okay, now time to take your exponential simplification powers to the next level. I want everyone to try and simplify this expression. And I think I've laid the groundwork that most of you should get close for this. I don't want to give away anything except to highlight the four. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, um, I have a question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Um, looking at this sum, could we yeah. say uh, we take the um, powered um, four? We take the four square. Okay. So and you say we you multiply it into the bracket. Do we multiply it into the bracket? There's two so, ways of doing this. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to show you both. But what I. I call it like the, the you can get there uh, sort of with a bit more risk. If you know, if you if your methods are solid, you can get there more quickly. I'm going to I'm going to emphasize the way initially of just saying doing this. Right? You know, but I do agree that can get a bit tiresome. So what you're saying is, can you apply the four in the bracket? You can. So you can apply the four to here and to here and to here. We will get the same answer, and that's that's fine. Both ways will get us the same answer. So no problem with that. But just to kind of keep my train of thought the same, I'm also going to do the way that I've been emphasizing so far. So let's actually, yeah, let me use a different color. So if I do it like you are asking, I'm going to put the one in there. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to multiply that by four, that by four, and that by four, which is a lot quicker. I agree. It's just a bit more high risk. So in this one, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 is 81. Uh, a squared, A squared, A squared, A squared, A to the 8. B cubed, B cubed, B cubed, B cubed. B to the 12. And in this one, I'm going to get 3 to the 4, A to the 8, B to the 12. And then what is 3 to the 4? It's just... 81. So what I want to show students is that both ways give you the same answer. Like, yeah, how much have you, for, like, I call this the power law for, for exponents. How, how much work have you guys done on, have you, have you been doing this a lot? Um, in my experience as a teacher, I found writing it out in full is helpful for most students until they get to very, very comfortable. Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. If if they write it in full, it's easier for them to actually get comfortable with it. Yeah. So yeah. then, then they can apply the laws of exponents afterwards. Yeah, it's not that it's wrong to do it like the fast way. This is this is great. It's just you lose touch with what's really happening. And so my preference is I really understand what's happening before you start taking shortcuts. You know that that would just be my even if it takes a bit longer. Uh, we haven't done this at school yet, this year. Yeah. So even um, the thing is, the laws of exponents are really just writing things out in full and speeding them up. So even if you haven't learned the laws of exponents, you should have learned what a power means. A power means to repeat everything below it with multiplication. So that's why I had the first time I just wrote the first thing. And then I wrote it again in the end four times. 
Okay. Zinkle, hang in there. All you think need to think about today, all I want you to think about is if I say to you 2x to the power of 3, that means 2x times 2x times 2x. If I say to you 3x to the power of 2, that means 3x times 3x. All that you need to understand is that powers mean repeat things with multiplication. Then you also have to be comfortable when we multiply of multiplying together the coefficients. So for example, in this question, when this thing I made up, two times two times two is eight. And um, so, and then I also multiply the variables x times x times x. And that would give me eight x. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's do another one, just to kind of keep us practicing. Okay, that, all right. This is a perfect example. The students who try and be super clever on this, until they've got a very good understanding, will probably mess this up. So I want you to try and do this from first principles. So the goal is the following. You are given a whole bunch of variables divided by a, another variable, and they're raised to the power of two. All I want you to think is what does this power of two mean? Then once you know what it means, I want you to write it out in full. And then I want you to see, can you use your other knowledge? Let's give that a go. So I want, this, I want you to kind of give that a go first before I give anything more away. In fact, this might actually be our last question. So I want to suggest starting with two brackets like this would be a good idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Noma is <laughs> last year. So what, what do I need to do to follow the same method? So the goal is to simplify this rather strange looking question. It's saying something divided by something squared. I'm saying just do the squared past first. Okay, so... Artelia, all I'm going to do is I'm going to write this out twice because there is a power of two in the, in the A. A squared, B, C. A, B. Let's make sure I don't make a silly mistake here. Uh, so all I've done is I've written out whatever was in the bracket once and a second time. Now I feel like I'm in a better position to sort this out. So what I'm going to do is if I'm multiplying two fractions, and I'm doing this with my um, grade eight at the moment. When you multiply two fractions, you multiply the top with the top and the bottom with the bottom. So what's two times two? It's four. What's A times A? It's A squared. B times B is B squared. C cubed times C cubed is C to the six. I want to vote. Do you understand how I got the top line? If you understand how I got this top line, thumbs up. If you feel very confused as to how I got 4a squared, b squared, c to the 6, thumbs down. Okay. So some, I can see a mixture. So even if you ask yourself, what do you think is going to come next? Right? If I look at this, I've multiplied the top. How could I repeat this process for the one below? Okay, there's quite a few. Yolanda, I see quite a few raised hands. I, do you want to ask a question? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, how did you get the C squared 6? C6. Okay. If you look at the top bits, can you see that there's a C to the three here and a C to the three there? So if you were multiplying C to the three times C to the three, that just means C to the six because you just write it out that many times. So when I do this, this below thing here, A squared times A squared, I get A to the four. B times B is B squared. C times C is C squared. 
And so now the last step is I need to simplify this, but this is a lot easier to simplify than this crazy looking thing up here. So the easy wins are going to be the B squareds. That's a piece of cake. And then the other thing that I'm going to have is if I have C, C to the two on the bottom and C to the six on the top, I'm going to end up with C to the four on the top. The four is going to stay here. Where is the A going to go? Because I've got A squared on top and I've got A to the four on the bottom. So I actually want to write this out to show you. So what I'm saying is we know that this is going to be C to the four, but what is going to happen to all these A's? I think that two A's on top are going to cancel with two A's on the bottom. And so we'll get left with four C to the four over A squared. All right, guys, because of the, the um, quiz that we're doing tonight, I'm going to stop at that point And I just want to sum up the following. When you deal with powers, whenever you see a, something with a bracket and something with a power, ask yourself, what does that mean? Or even if you see something like um, x to the power of seven, all that means is repeat x seven times with multiplication. That was really the summary of the whole lesson. And then using that with your basic knowledge of algebra. Um, Lucky, before we um, put the quiz in the chat for um, the students, is there anything else you want to comment on or add? Um, no, I think you really, really covered all the bases very well. I'm, I'm happy with okay. it. Okay. So guys, it's been really fun kind of being a guest teacher for the day. I'm sure at some point again, I will pop back in. Um, but yeah, um, I think now you can go ahead and do your quiz see how much of the stuff kind of uh, has you've learned over the last while and um yeah all the best for the upcoming